Last week on the show, we got a chance to talk with former New York Mets pitcher Pete Harnish, a 1991 Major League Baseball All-Star, and one of the greatest pitchers in Fordham baseball history. Here's part two of that interview. So you finish your career with a brief stint in Milwaukee, four memorable seasons in Cincinnati, end up playing with guys like Ken Griffey Jr. and now Yankee manager Aaron Boone. Rumor has it that Boone still plays in your fantasy football league. I was curious how good of a, a fantasy football player Aaron Boone is. Actually, I, I feel like he, you might have talked to him and set this whole thing up. They actually won the championship last year, which kind of made everybody sick because if you know Boone, and Boone he's a great guy, first of all. All this is in jest, but he loves to talk trash, and, and he's usually not great at fantasy football, but – and I still believe he has a partner, a, a silent partner that we've actually never met. But it's a funny league. We started the league in 98, and we're still going. And uh, awesome. there's two, two sides. It's, it is unbelievable. It's Denny Nagel, Greg Vaughn, Hal Morris, Steve Avery, wow. um, all these guys that I played with. And uh, they're all Booney, Sean Casey's in, in, in the league. Um, it's, it's awesome, man. It, it gives us – you know, I don't talk to these guys basically from February – or in the middle of January till August. And then all of a sudden they hit me with the text. When's the draft? What are we doing? And they, these guys like, you know, they're all retired baseball players, I guess, with basically nothing else to do, which is kind of sad in a way. But um, they, they use that sadness and, uh, and, and they turn it into a pod. They love this league is like what everybody's about. We love to compete. There's a few dollars on the line, obviously. But, yeah, Booney won last year, and that kind of made everybody want to throw up. But he did win. No, all, all these years of covering Major League games, one of the best conversations I've ever had with a baseball player was actually Mark Teixeira. We were standing there getting ready to interview him, and he had a fantasy football magazine in his locker room, you know, in his locker space. Yeah. And I asked him, I was like, do you play? And he was like, do I play? I'm in so many leagues. We started talking about fantasy football. And it ended up being a fun conversation. Yeah, it's really turned into it. You know, we started. Well, I did it with the Mets. When I was with the Mets, the Mets had a league. So I was in that league or whatever. But then when I went to the Reds, I started the league. So I've been commissioned. And I'm a commissioner of two leagues for 20, what's it, 20? This will be our 24th season. And uh, when we started, I was getting the USA Today on Monday mornings and doing all the scoring, you know, on a, on a pad. And then sent telling everybody who want, you know, putting the scores out there and everything. And it was uh, pretty interesting. Come a long way with the lifetime scoring and everything now. So everybody keeps up with it. But, but yeah, it is. A lot of sharp guys, you know, there's nobody in the league that doesn't know. Everybody knows what they're doing. Our rules don't change. We have a very, it's not like one guy dominates all the time. Although Matt Clement, the, the old pitcher from the Pirates and the Rockies, very, very good. He knows his stuff. He's always in the hunt. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it seems like a different winner every year. And uh, it, fantasy football is awesome, man. We, we love it. So Pete, up against it in terms of time, want to play a little quick speed round of questions here. You know, when you were playing on the on the road in the majors, favorite city, and was there a place in that city, let's say a bar or a restaurant, that you would always frequent when you were there? Whew, that's a tough one, man. Um, I'll give it – I really like Chicago and Boston were my two favorites, probably. I was in Chicago more being in the National League. I played in the National League for a bunch of years, so I didn't get to Boston for a pretty good chunk of it. Boston's probably my favorite overall city, but my favorite time – for an event was uh, fly into Chicago after a day game, get in there maybe seven, eight o'clock at night, uh, bus, bus from the airport to the hotel, land at the hotel. You tell everybody, all right, 20 minutes, drop your bags, get down in the lobby. You know, all the young guys had to be there. I was a veteran at the time. All the young guys had, to, I was always the organizer or whatever. Um, we go to Geno's East. I don't know if you've ever been to Geno's East in Chicago, deep dish pizza place. It's uh hole in the wall dump you walk in there there's people right on the walls you're supposed to sign the walls you etch your name in the wall whatever it's it's like a dump the deep dish pizza is unbelievable and maybe 16 of us 15 16 of us at a big long table just pitches of beer and a bunch of deep dish pies and a lot of laughs and really great for it's for the team sounds like a great memory pete yeah yeah so speaking of great memories three favorite teammates from your major league baseball career Oh man, that's, that's, it's really tough. Uh, um, that's why I gave you three instead of one. I figured it'd be. Yeah. Three. I could give you 20 names. I enjoyed my teammates so much, man. We had so much fun. Uh, Casey candell has got to be up there. The utility infield to play with the Expos and play with me in Houston. Sean Casey is definitely up there. Uh, Danny Graves comes to mind. Jeff Bagwell is one of my favorite people on the planet. Jeff is just a, an unbelievable, obviously hall of fame player, but, but a hall of fame person. Uh, Casey Candell, one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Sean Casey, awesome. I, um, 
I know it's too many, but, but I could go on and on. But those are okay. those are some of the ones that just come to mind because I, I, I uh, Todd Hunley, John Franco. I mean, every team I could give you, I could give you four or five from every. Eduardo Alfonso, one of the best people on the planet. So I'm sorry to ramble on, but there's so many people that touched my career and my life that I really, really enjoyed. You know, getting dressed next to every day. You know, oh, that sounded weird. That sounded weird. One and all, it's wonderful memory, Speed. I think those are yeah. some teams and some great teams. And, and like I said, it's a different era for baseball. You know, final question for us, which hitter gave you the hardest time? In the show? Um, I, I, there was a few that come to mind. Tony Gwynn was a real pain in the rear end. A uh, super guy. What a shame he passed away. Uh, great person. Unbelievable player. Unbelievable hitter. If he needed to hit a home run, he did. He didn't hit many home runs, but if it was a situation where he needed to hit a home run, he hit a home run. He was he was unbelievable. Wade Boggs for the, the limited time I pitched against the Red Sox before I went to the National League, but Barry Bonds was probably the guy for me. Um, I think he's I think he might have five or six or seven home runs lifetime off me, which you know is only one percent of his home runs. But he was just such an unbelievable offensive force. Um, not not a real popular guy. Players didn't love him, but what a player! Best player I ever saw by by a wide margin in my, in my estimation. And I played with some great players. I mean, I played with Ken Griffey. I played with Jeff Bagwell. I played with Craig Biggio. I played with Barry Larkin. I played with a bunch of Hall of Famers. Barry Bonds is the best player I ever saw. Yeah, I had, I had lunch once with Jimmy Key, and he only got to pitch against him a couple of times, but he said how tough it was to face Barry Bonds. You know, the umpires, he crowded the plate. You see, he choked up. If you look at it, he choked way up on the bat, which nobody really really realizes. But he choked up so he could get right on top of the plate and take away the inside. He, he'd keep that ball in the inside corner fair. The umpires never called it. So if it was a hair inside, they wouldn't call it. You had to pitch him in. Um, you pitch him out over the plate, he just wore you out. His barrel went right to the outer edge. He waited long. He recognized pitches out of hand better than anyone I've ever seen. Just, a, you know, again, I, I can't say enough about that guy. Everybody asked me the best player I ever saw, and I don't think it's close. It's Barry Bonds for me. And I think it's cool, too, that you bring up Boston since that was your first major league strikeout, right? Yeah. Dwight Evans and got a chance to face Boggs in that first game. Yeah, Dwight Evans is uh, unbelievable for, to strike. For a first strikeout, Dwight Evans is a pretty cool one. For a first home run, Jim Rice grand slam in the fourth inning was not the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, but it's all I gave up. I pitched seven pretty good innings, and uh, I should have thrown him a fastball. And I, threw him a, I threw, should have thrown him a high fastball. I threw him a slider. And, he hit it about, uh, I think, uh, half a mile, they said it went. I don't know. It Ubered back to the park later on. So, um, But, you know, it was just happening. It's a funny, funny story about that after the game. Jim Palmer, who never gave up a, a – you know, Jim Palmer never gave up a grand slam in his career. And Jim Palmer was, was super to me when I was a young pitcher. He was great. He'd come to me. he talked to me all the time. I, I can't say enough. He really helped me. We were similar. I mean, I wasn't as good as Jim Palmer. I don't want to come off like that. But similar stuff, similar – um, approach to the game, you know, we went after everybody, high fastball, breaking ball down. Um, and he, he took it upon himself to help me out. But he said, he said, man, way to go, kid. It only took you four innings to give up a grand slam. I pitched, I don't know, he told me whatever. He wasn't, Jim Palmer wasn't afraid to tell you how great he was either, but super guy. He was awesome to me. And uh, he's like, I think I pitched 4,000 innings and never gave one up. It took you four innings. I'm like, thanks a lot, man. Beat it. So. We definitely think that you're great. I mean, 24 complete games in your major league career. They just don't make them like you anymore. And we wanted to thank you for taking some time to, to talk with us about your career and about your son and, and about playing baseball here in the Bronx. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It was, it was a major part of my life playing baseball in the Bronx. And it, it, it shaped who I was and, and shaped my career. Thanks so much, Pete. No problem. Thank you.